Okay, let's explore this problem, which essentially is going to deal with some break-even concepts, and it's going to deal with absorption costing and variable costing concepts. Okay, well, the problem you can see in front of you, it says Haas Company, uh, let me leave that back up there, Haas Company manufactures and sells one product, and we've got variable cost information and fixed cost. And during its first years, of operations, Haas produced 60,000 units and sold 60,000 units. During its second year, it produced 75,000 and sold 50,000 units. In its third year, it produced 40,000 and sold 65,000. The selling price of the company's product is $58 per unit. And the first question says, compute the break-even point in units sold. Well, here's how you do it. They give you $58 as the selling price. And then you've got to figure out what the variable costs are. It's 2012, 4, and 2 for these items given right here for a total of $38. So there's a contribution margin of $20. Now, the break even formula is fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. So if I click on this, you can see the formula there on the screen, or you can see it up here. I've taken the fixed cost, which is the 960,000 and the 240,000 given right here in the problem. And I divide it by the contribution mar margin per unit, which is given in cell E32. And once I do that, we come up with 60,000 units. And that's how you solve requirement one. Okay, now the next question they ask you appears right here. They, it says, assume the company uses variable costing. Compute the unit product cost for years one, two, and three. Well, all you've got to do is look at the variable manufacturing cost. That'd be the 20, the 12, and the 4. 20, 12, and 4 is $36, and it's the same variable costing per unit for all three years. Okay, now the next part of this question says produce a variable cost income statement, and that's what you have right here. So most of this is, uh, you know, simply multiplying the volumes times the appropriate dollar amounts to come up with uh, the dollar amounts, right? We know what the sales were, we know what the selling price was, so we can come up with uh, uh, what sales would be, and you've got to do a little bit of, of math each year depend on the variable cost of goods sold and the variable selling, right? So we knew the variable cost of goods sold was 36 bucks, that's the 20, the 12, and the 4 added up, and then you've got to multiply that times the number of units uh, um, that they produced and sold in those various years and that's how you're coming up with those numbers you're doing the same thing with the two dollars but remember that variable selling appears below the line for fixed expenses and so does fixed manufacturing overhead so that's where the 960 the 240 appears um, and what I what I mean by below the line the variable selling and administrative cost we don't even see it in terms of in terms of cost of goods sold because we're using variable costing. And let me state that more clearly. We're not calculating contribution margin based on absorption costing with variable costing. Instead, we take sales less all variable costs to come up with contribution margin less fixed expenses. So the variable selling, the 120, 100, and 130, actually appears in the variable cost line up top. Okay, so this is an example of variable costing and what it would look like, a variable costing income statement for this problem. Now, I just slid this out of the way so you can see that the last line is net operating income or loss, and, and in year two we do have a loss. Okay, now the next part of this question says produce the unit product cost under absorption and uh, or actually under absorption costing so you've got to calculate the product cost well you know the direct materials was 20 in all three years that comes from there the direct labor was 12 also in all three years variable manufacturing four the same in all three years but we've got to compute fixed manufacturing overhead and this requires a different calculation depending on the volumes involved right so we knew there was 960 of fixed manufacturing in year one, we divide it by the 60,000 unit produced and sold. In year two, we divide it by the 75,000 units. And in year three, we divide it by 40,000. So we see that fixed manufacturing overhead on a per unit basis is going to change based on the volume. And that's how we come up with the different variable costing unit product cost to this problem.
Okay, then the last part of this question says, or asks us to produce an absorption costing income statement. And this is what it looks like. Now the sales numbers are going to be exactly the same, but the cost of goods sold is going to be based on the cost of goods sold we just calculated, right? So 60,000 units times $50 per unit, right? Then 50,000 times 4840. Those numbers came from what we solved earlier. And um, in year three, we've got 25,000 units that were sold at 4880 plus 40,000 units sold at $60 per unit. Okay? Uh, and that comes out to be 3620. Now the reason why we're using different costs for the different years is because the production and the sales amounts were different.